All right, so, okay. And so many different ones. Doop, doop. Did I lose it? Where did it go? There it is. All right. So I called at this e instance method, right? So s1.e, it's an instance method that I call on an instance. And it just says that this squirrel is eating some food. I've hard coded that string. But if I want to reference the squirrel itself, Right? That's where the self keyword allows you that access. So I can do something. Instead of this squirrel, I can string interpolate because it is a variable. I can put in self. And I will check to see what that really is. So if I get out of here and I restart it, and then I do s1.eat, what should self reference when s1, the is instance, is calling this eat? Method. What is self here? What? It should be squirrel one, right? It shouldn't be squirrel two because squirrel one is the one that's invoking this particular instance method. So if I see it, what I'll actually see is this squirrel object, right? And we can check against S1, S2, and S3. If we look at the exact object key, we'll see that this actually matches. So the self is going to take on what is calling it. So if it's s1.e, then the self will be s1. If it's s2.e, the self will be scroll number two. So if I do s2.e, what I'll see is this sort of like CF8, and the CF8 will refer to scroll two. So self is sort of dynamic in the way that it refers to what is being called. The context is going to be really important. That is always a really dicey topic. So just a quick flash of hands like, yeah, I got it, or like, no, that didn't make any sense, or like gladiator style, like we can, we're, we're on the fence here. Awesome. So. Um, I can hear you say like, Yes. What? Wow. And I didn't pay you to say that. So the next sort of transition is this is sloppy, right? In the way that like this doesn't mean anything to anyone. But if I have the squirrel instance, I should have access to all of these squirrel instance methods. And one of the instance methods that we see is, well, rather the attribute is name, but we don't have access to it yet. So we can easily give ourselves access by doing the reader or accessor. Um, so let's do just the reader for name. I've now built the getter method for name. So, wow, that was so fast. Bless up to that syntactical sugar. If I have s1, I can call s1.name, right? And s1 is that object. If I know I have self here, that's always going to refer to the object. The object has methods attached to it, like name. Oops. Like name. So that object can in fact invoke methods. So if I get out of here, I come in. Then if I do something like s3.eat, it'll say Theodore is eating something. Cool. And so how are we feeling about self so far? Now, we talked about like this class variable and how it relates to the class, right? Inside of an instance method, self should point to the instance. But purely inside the class, what should self point to? Should self point to the instance inside of the class? Or should self point to the class inside the class? That's like a very weird sentence to say. Right, that one, the sent one, right? So here, if I just define a method and I call this self dot, what I'm really saying is, hold on. what I'm really saying is the squirrel class itself. I want to give the squirrel class its own methods, the class itself. And so one of the methods is probably be like, give me a list of all the squirrels that have ever been made. Because earlier we determined that that's not the responsibility of the instance, but it's the responsibility of the class. 
So if I do squirrel.all, what I'm trying to build is a class method. And what I want this to return is going to be the array I made that is actually holding every instance of the squirrel. So if I simply return at at all squirrels, let's take a look at what that built. If I exit out of here and I go back into it, should I be able to do something like S1, which is an instance, and call this class method? No, that'd be crazy. So like, let me try it. All. It says undefined method all for the squirrel instance with the attribute name of Alvin. However, with squirrel, if I call the dot all method that I've built, it will actually give me the three instances of squirrel that I built. Because every time I run dot new, I'm calling the initialize, I'm setting the name, and then I'm pushing the instance I just made me into the array. So now, when I do S1, there's one item in that all array. When I do the second one, and it runs this again, it now pushed the second one in. When I do the third one, it now pushes the third one in. So when I do scroll.all, there should be these three instances inside that all array. And that all array is being called here inside the class method scroll.all. So the class method scroll.all, uh, that scroll is the name of the class itself. Is that the same as the class method name self.all? Yes. That is, wow, my god. I also didn't pay you, but I should. Now, we talked about inside the class, the scope is going to refer to the squirrel. Inside of an instance method, the scope refers to the instance. OK, so a couple, couple thumbs up from there. So if this is inside the class, squirrel, if self is in fact the class, self.all will refer to the class, which is squirrel. Just out of curiosity, if you actually wrote it as squirrel.all, would it actually run directly? I just did, and it did. Yeah, like I, I had this. Is that what you're talking about? Okay, yeah. No. Yeah, that's like sort of like the stepping stone. Um, cool, you're good? Um, so, and then I see you, and then. Uh, then why you, you use uh, self in the class? Okay, so the question is why would I use self instead of hard coding the constant uh, squirrel? Um, to be perfectly honest, there is no real difference except the general um, like style guidelines will utilize the self keyword. So basically, like this is good practice, um, but the functionality is exactly the same. Did you ever make an object where you take a class and you uh, reference another class? Not just that, but like putting a different class uh, where you want. You can. So the question is like, let's just say I had a class of like books, right? And I had all these books, whatever. Can I do something like def book dot like cool as like a class method for whatever reason? Can I put it inside the scroll class? Technically, yes. But why is the book methods being in, defined inside the scroll class? We want to separate those concerns. Anything dealing with the squirrel should be built in the squirrel class. Anything dealing with the book should be built in the book class. So we will get, we can get to that if you want to, but uh, it's the separation of concerns. I wonder, uh, like the class name squirrel, but could that be used? They're they're both referencing somewhat the same thing. Yeah, so. Yeah, Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna touch that today. Can I feed in instances or objects as arguments? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna touch that. Okay, cool. Uh, you have a question? My question is about this answer. Okay, it's best practice. That's the short answer. Um, so there's not there's nothing of the method that implies that it's the Yes, if there is nothing in front of the method, it is an instance method. Mm -hmm. Once I start doing, and I'm going to get rid of this because it's confusing. Once I start doing something like self, where I put in the class name, it's going to refer to the class. Cool? 
And so I have a class variable that references sort of the class. And I have class methods that do the class. And I have instance methods that will refer to the instance. So in this way, it's very easy to think about, right? I have class variables for the class. I have class methods. And I have instance variables and instance methods for the instance. And so the separation should be clear, but not necessarily easy. Does that make sense? Uh, you mean this? No. That is going to call the attribute, correct, yeah. So it's the same? Uh, yes, it is the same for what the return value will be. I don't want to get too much into it, but, yeah, I don't want to get too much into it. Uh, when you refer to the instance self, remember that's the object squirrel, I'm going to call a method name. And inside the reader, if we remember, um, name gives me at name. So let me move this here. This is going to be kind of disgusting. Uh, yeah, if I call dot name, right, which is again what this builds for me, if I call dot name, I'm going to return the instance. And uh, the question is, can I just sort of short circuit that and ask directly for the attribute? You can. But the best practice is uh, you should be invoking the method. Because it skips a step? Um, not because it skips a step. It has to do with, and as you get more and more complicated into Ruby, something known as like encapsulation um, and scope. So this is the, the move for what we want to teach you in terms of like the practicing, the best practice. Dang, you guys are really really smart. I never really get these questions uh, early, so I'm like both simultaneously impressed and extremely frustrated because I don't want to confuse you by answering like super specifically, but the questions are amazing. Um, so like, good job. Uh, all right. Hopefully I didn't make things more confusing, but what I do want to reference is sort of how are we feeling now about the class variable? And then how are we feeling about self? Oh, wow. OK, great. OK. Um, remember, this will make more sense with practice. But if it's still not making sense, feel free to just like pull any one of us aside, and we'll go over some more specific examples. Uh, where you use self, are you always going to be using the class um, Remember, inside self.all, Self here is referring to the squirrel class, right? So inside here, the scope inside here, inside of a class method, the scope will be the class. So the class has access to the class variable. Not to beat a dead horse, but if you're in a position where you could either use at variable or self dot variable, which one is more? at variable or self dot, you mean self dot method? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you should be using the method call. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reader is building that method for you. So if you have two, it's in that name, then you can use the variable that we don't have to say at name, we can say at x equals to name. At x equals to name. And then in the reader, you can say def name at x. Like this? No, no. Um, let's say we did it. Like this? Yeah. yeah, that's right. So then, how does the reader know when you get called a name that it wants to use the variable at name inside 
that's where the syntactical sugar comes from. And that is this helper method that's sort of like available to you. Because we never defined anything called add a reader. It just seems to like come out of the box out of nowhere. I was like, hey, you want to see something cool? And I just wrote it. Um, what, it's do what it's doing under the hood is whatever this is, it will assume that the method and the attribute name have to match character for character. Wow. All right. I just want to check something. Uh, in the initialized method, we have the add name equal name. The add name is a instance variable, not a method. But the name, like the attribute reader name, is, is under the hood a instance method. And then you have two things called name, and I think that's where I get confused. It's like you have variables called name and you have methods called name, and you're accessing like the variable name with the method name. Yes. Uh, it does seem a bit confusing in the way that I have an attribute name and then I'm building a method name that accesses the same one, but that's what this is doing. So that's kind of like what you're alluding to in the back. And that is like, what if this was like X and then can I just return sort of like X inside a method? Um, it is constantly repetitive because this pattern, oh, that was terrible, this pattern is very common where I want to have an attribute and I want to have a getter method that matches the exact same thing as the attribute. So because of that, it's always going to kind of be the same for a lot of reasons and a lot of times. It makes sense, but I think that helps explain to me at least like why I would call that name versus when I would call self name. It's like sometimes I want the method and sometimes I want the user. Okay. Um, I would say generally, if you're going to build a method, always use the method. But crazy good questions. Wow. Um, wow. It throws me off a little bit, but I'm like really blown away. I'm impressed. All right. Uh, so we talked about self, class, and instance method, and the differences. And what we want to talk about today is establishing a relationship. So for me, I like, I'm just like really goofy. You mean why I started like moving things around? Yeah, the exact like examples, but it seems bad. If you move initialize, it changes its behavior. Not the behavior of the No, it shouldn't matter at all. Uh, however, there are conventions, and that is I'm going to declare all my variables first. I'm going to have initialize always be my first method, so that anytime I'm looking at a class, I should see initialize like kind of first. And so that's sort of like a standard. And then you have like your, your instance methods, and then we won't get into it, but there are, are other things that you can do inside of a class that kind of come after that. Something like private and stuff. That order. The order of execution is not going to be as important. Uh, however, per convention, you'll see like variables being declared, and then you'll see like an initialize, and then you'll start to see like instance methods and class methods. Cool. All right. Wow, you guys are really trying to do the right thing, and that's awesome, man. The questions are so good, I always lose my train of thought. This has never happened before. So you gotta give me like two seconds. All right, so we're trying to establish relationships, right? Not like in Tinder relationships or coffee meets bagel, but relationships between two classes and sort of two models. Um, do you just want a break before we continue or are we, are we cool to continue? So who says break? Just, huh? A what? Oh, you water. can get water. You guys want water? All right, cool. Let's take a one, nay, two minute water break. Yeah? So, um, 
we're talking about relationships, right? Uh, and the idea is that uh, yesterday we alluded to the fact that a bank account owner, a bank account can have like, uh, I'm sorry, an, own, well, an owner, right? Like you as a person can open a lot of different bank accounts, right? You can have a checking, you can have a savings, and it takes three business days to kind of transfer. Somebody has seen this like special. Um, and then you can have like a joint account with like your best friend, like your mom. Uh, and you can have a lot of these bank accounts, but each one of these bank accounts will sort of belong to an owner. And so when it comes to coding, again, we're trying to model the real world. So one of the basic relationships that we're gonna talk about is sort of this one to many, right? There's this idea that uh, you can have something like a, a chipmunk or a squirrel, right? When it builds a home, it can build like a, a nest for like a little home, right? It just like, you know, picks a bunch of twigs and it throws it in like a tree or whatever. And they, you're really liking this, right? Uh, the idea is that every sort of summer, it could build another nest in a different tree. So realistically speaking, uh, a squirrel can have many nests, right? But each one of those nests belongs to a particular squirrel, right? So if I made these three nests, right, no other squirrel should be coming in and being like, that's my nest. I'm like, mm, it's not playing. I made that. That belongs to me. So that's kind of like the idea of this relationship. You're going to have um, less hilarious ones, like book and author. Uh, it doesn't mean it's less good. It just means that it may not be as foon. So if I have like a book, right, uh, and I'm an author, how many books can I potentially write? Just one, I can write like, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so the thing is I can write a bunch of these books, like many, right? I can make, I could write many books and each of these books that I've written belong to me. We're not gonna talk about plagiarism or anything like that, but that's sort of the idea, this one to many relationship. So uh, let's like define some terms like as I use them that we kind of have like the same sort of terminology. So the first thing I want to talk about is model. Uh, does anyone have an idea of what that is? <laughs> wow, yes, I was hoping for that. Uh, so really a model could be anything that you're talking about, right? So we have like the bank account model, we have a squirrel model, uh, we have a book model, and what we do with that model is we build the class for it to represent it properly with all of its attributes and any sort of functionality by building either a class or an instance method to sort of model the real world. Um, and so when you hear me say model, like, oh, we need a squirrel model, right? We need a book model. Really, what I'm really kind of talking about is that blueprint translating something that exists in the real world into this class code blueprint that we can create instances of. And so you're gonna see a lot of this being used often and it will make more sense as you hear it and as you use the words uh, themselves. Uh, so the next one is kind of be like this domain. So as you start to build out your projects in week three, we're gonna talk about like what is your domain? And the domain is gonna be, this is very abstract, and that is like what is the subject matter of your problem? So the domain for me, if I'm building like a library, is that I have a book and I have a library and the library can have many books right and this one particular book will belong to a library um, and so that's kind of like the the domain um, using models to sort of describe what the, the problem is it's really really abstract it will make more sense like if you're trying to build a particular app does anyone have an idea for an app that they want to build that they're like oh I want to be a developer, so I want to build this app. It's okay if you don't want to share, it's potentially a billion dollar idea, so I get it. But is anyone willing to kind of share an idea for an application? Okay, sure. Uh, an application app that allows students to be able to be Trying to say something? You want to uh, that is a that is a very good idea. So the domain behind this application is there has to be some sort of teacher model, right? Has to be some sort of students model. There should be a model for like complaint. 
because the idea behind these relationships is that a student can have many sort of complaints. I don't want to use the word complaint. That sounds like naggy. Um, issues. Um, student issues on dicey as well. Uh, uh, student feed comments. Ooh, wow. Saved me. Right? So students can have many of these comments, right? And each one of these comments will belong to a student, right? And a school will have many students. Each one of these students belongs to a school. And so that's kind of like the domain for your application. So that's starting to make just a little bit more sense. Like, what is like the subject matter of your problem? And what models do you need to basically build it out? And that's kind of what it is. Uh, that being said, the next part of this is domain modeling. Exactly what I did for you. And that is like heard what the nature of the problem that you're trying to solve, right? The premise of your issue. And now I have to create these models for your domain. So it's domain modeling. Cool. And then establishing those relationships between either the comment, the student, or the school. So far, like how how's that come along? I know you're like diligently taking notes, but also, while at the same time, if you can like nod your head or shake it, that would be the money. I used to say money a lot, and there was an instructor who's very Italian. Uh, I used to be like, yo, man, that's so money. And then one day he was like, you want to grab dinner with me? That would be very money. And I was like, ooh, oh, that's not how I would use it, but I like that. So uh, cool. You, you guys are really getting to know me. Uh, great. So we have model, domain, and then domain modeling, sort of like as a, like a theoretical example. A lot of this is abstract. But again, when you hear it a lot, it'll make more sense. Is this readme file the same as what we'll find on Wordpress? 100%. Letter for letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have to stop writing because sometimes people are kinetic learners. Or if you write it, it makes more sense. But if you just need the reference, it will be there forever and ever until the cloud goes down. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, cool. So relationships, just. So far, we've talked about this like has many and belongs to. There are naturally more sort of relationships, right? Like, think about it. Uh, we have like patients and doctors. If I'm a doctor and I've gone to medical school for like a bazillion years, do I want to study all of that science to be like, great, I'm going to treat one patient? That'd be crazy, right? A doctor can see many patients, and as a particular patient, how many doctors do you think I should be able to see? Right? I should be able to see many doctors, right? I'm not going to stick with my pediatrician for the rest of my life because my teeth or my feet hurt. I'm a grown man. I have like other, I was like a foot doctor, there's a teeth doctor, there's an eye doctor. There are fancy names for this, but you know what I'm saying, right? Okay. You don't know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. So these are the sort of the relationships. That being said, the relationship between patient and doctor is like a many to many. A doctor can see many patients and a patient can see many doctors. There are even more complicated relationships than that, but that's sort of like the idea behind what we mean by relationships, relationships between models, and that domain and the problem that you're trying to solve in the application you're trying to build. Okay, thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know it takes a second to process, so that's that's why I make these silly faces for you guys to, like, to take the three seconds and be like, no, yeah, that makes sense. And so um, instead of like staring angrily at you, I go and I just like wait until it, it either clicks or it doesn't, in which case I can try again to re-explain. So what the objectives are for today is we're going to literally build out one uh, class that has a relationship with another. Uh, we're going to start out fundamentally with this one-to-many, and then we're going to basically create these two classes establish that relationship and see how they are related to each other uh, through methods. Um, and what I mean by that is we'll start with, unless somebody has like a dying uh, relationship they really want to build, like gyms and lifters, okay, just me, uh, we're going to start with like a book and author because the relationships should be simple, in which case we could just focus on the code and the logic. Um, but unless there's like a one-to-many relationship that you're super excited about that you want to talk about? No one? No one? Sometimes it can be sometimes it can be really silly. One student, oh actually not a student, a former instructor was like, great, why don't we do uh, this is just out of control. Like uh, like sick person has many like diarrheas and then like each diarrhea belongs to a sick person. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. It did not go over well. But like Brandon walked in on it. I was like trust me it's like definitely code related. Um, but we'll, we'll build out book and author. 
All right. So in the interest of saving time, I sort of built this class out, so I'm not wasting your time talking about the same things over and over. And so we could focus on what are known as like the deliverables and actually building this out. So I built this book class, right? Uh, it should be pretty simple, class book. It initializes with three attributes, a title, how many pages are in this book, and who the author is. Um, and so here we have uh, just a regular initialize, and then I use add at all, and so this is kind of, kind of a convention to understand that this is the same thing I'm doing before, right? Instead of all squirrels, I just put all. Um, and then I made that an array, and then I'm pushing each brand new instance I'm making into that all array, and then I'm building the class method all, so that I have access to something like book, capital B, dot all, to give me all the instances of all my books, yeah? Uh, I was gonna say, is that good practice? Um, what I want, what I want to say is we will learn something, uh, sort of next week that makes all of this happen very fast, very magically. So I can't say it's necessarily good practice because nobody really does it, but this is sort of what's happening under the hood. It's sort of like an understanding. Yeah? Man, the questions are so, so good. Um, I'm like geeking out over it, like my cheeks hurt, actually. Yeah, I've talked about you guys to my, my partner. I was like, this class is very strong. And they laugh at most of the things I say. They're delightful. Um, great, so I have class author. Uh, same sort of model where I have this added all array. And this author literally just has a name. Cool. Now, the idea behind what this domain is, is that uh, I have a book that belongs to an author, and I have an author that has many books that they've written. So if I think about it in terms of my book, right, how can I make a brand new book? I can do book.new, whoop, that's did not it, right? And then I can have all of the attributes. I have title, um, does anyone want to be the writer of this book? Pages, whoop. And then the author. So does anyone want to be the author of this book? Or? Cool, Dana it is. Dana, what, what book did you write? What would you want to write a book on? Hmm. The Art of War? Ooh, wow, spicy. The Art of War, I'm sorry. The Art of War. Um, this is actually a, a fairly short read, actually. I just put 81 pages. Uh, and the author here is going to be the Dana. Right, smiley face. Ooh, watch this. Look at this. Ooh, you like that? Wow, emojis. If you want to use the, I'll show you about the emojis yet. <laughs> if you hold Control Command Spacebar, it brings up the emojis. These actually will like work. Like the UTF encoding is like pretty good. Anyways, let's dissect this a little bit. The idea is that when I take a look at this instance, right? What are the data types of each of these attributes? What is the data type here? And then this naturally is a, and this is also a string. So that being said, if I do something, right, like uh, B1, ooh, B1, well, let's make another book. Um, does anyone have a book that they're reading? Um, this is, what? The Art of War Volume 2? <laughs> nice. This is 101 pages, and this was written by the Gabby. Cool. I'm going to remove this unnecessary smiley face, but also keep the emoji because it's fun. So I have B1 and B2, right? Hello, B1. Hello, B2. Um, you've heard of the show Bananas in Pajamas? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what a good show. So if I do B1.title, if I take a look, I in fact have the accessor, so I do have that getter method built already. Um, what will I get back? The art of war as a string. Now, if we talked about method chaining in terms of like what the return value is, let's do this, binding.pry. Wait, did I require pry? Add a boy. Plus plus me. Sorry. 
If I run Ruby and I do book, it's going to stop at the bottom. Okay, just kidding. What the? Wrong number of arguments, given one, expected three. Oh my goodness, you guys haven't seen that yet. I am so stupid. I'm getting really ahead of myself. Yeah, that's the, the shorthand. Whoa. Wow, I'm moving I'm moving dicely fast here. Alright, let me just I'll I'll teach you guys a, about how you can get things out of order by using something like that. And now that makes sense to me. Great. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. We just need to understand what B1 is right now, right? And B1 is basically this book. If I put B1.author, right? <laughs> the order, the order matters, Evans. Oh, unbelievable. All right, let me just do this real quick. Boop, boop, boop. And then finally, was it 81 pages? What a short book. What an easy read. Not at all horrific. All right, cool. Let me get out of here. Let me get here. And now let's do b1.pages. Good. And then b1.author is what I think it is. What I alluded to yesterday was that this string has string methods to it. Right? So if I wanted to, I can put uh, upcase. OK, downcase, sure, whatever. All right? It only has string methods on it. But wouldn't it be nice if instead of the string Dana, I had an actual author object, in which case I can call on it author attributes and author sort of methods. So for example, let's just add on a new one, like age. Cool. Add age equals to age. And then I would also need, ah, uh, we can't change our age, right? Or can we? Uh, we should we should we should model the real world, right? No one's just walking around but like I'm now 21. Your age is Forever. Oh my goodness. Embarrassing. <laughs> Maybe for you, I'm forever 21. Yeah, right. I'm proud to be what I am that I will not say in the recording. So, um, shows you how proud I am. So, the idea is that if I'm here, instead of the string, if I had an author object that had an attribute of, sorry, it was like a bug. Um, I didn't just like zone out like those like for no reason. Um, then I can call author instance methods on it, right? So like instead of sort of this string, which I can only call string methods on, it would be really nice if b1.author returned an object. And that way, I can do dot name on it, or I can even do dot age. So it gives me access to all the author instance methods instead of being stuck in what I have deemed string land. We want to get out of string land, and we want to get into object land and object-oriented programming. Here's what I mean. Um, if I need access to both the book and the author, which I'm going to split here. Ooh, you guys like that? Have you seen this before? Okay, I, I could tell there wasn't like a ah moment. I feel stupid. So I need access to both the book and the author. What I could do is I can copy and paste the code and add it all the way to the bottom so I have access to it, or I can sort of combine the files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file. Um, let's do it this way. Inside tools, inside this file called run, I'm going to combine the files. The reason I did tools was just because I wanted an obnoxious example of a subfolder, so then I can explain what the relative path is, and here's what I mean. Uh, if I want to pull in a gem, like pry, then I can simply do require pry. If I want to pull in a file, that file lives locally on my machine. So I can require that entire file, and I can require the relative path to what this file is. So inside tools, I have a file called run. If I want to get access to book from run, where do I need to go? I need to go 
from tools, I need to go into the one-to-many folder. Inside the one-to-many folder, that's where book lives. So inside tools is where run is. Therefore, I need to go dot dot one folder up, and that's going to put me in the one-to-many folder. From here, there should be a file called book. So far, so good. And then in the same way, I have something called author. I don't need the .rb because it's like a Ruby file, and Ruby should know Ruby, and it should be OK. If you put .rb, I think it'll be fine. So now let me just drop a binding here, and I will clean up some of this code here. Boop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Ruby. Can I do Ruby run .rb? Will that be fine? It sort of breaks. It says there's no file there, which makes sense because if I ls and I take a look at all my files, I have to cd into tools before I can get into like the run folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Ruby tools and I'm going to run the run file. This is actually going to run the code. And notice it's only five lines long, but because I pulled in the code, the require relative essentially is like copying all of that code into this file. I have access to book. Versus something that doesn't exist, like something like Simon, which is a class I did not build. It should give me an error that says there's uninitialized constant Simon. Yeah. Uh, I guess question about the relative yeah. Yeah, so the question is, if author was inside tools, boop, and now it is, then the relative path is in the exact same directory, I have a file called author. Yep. The, dot, the single dot is current directory. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm just going to leave that alone since like, it's actually like a good to see like, how that's working. Yeah? So I'm actually going to just get out of here, run tools. I should still have access to both book and author. All right, so now that we've kind of like had this combo file, so I have access to both of them, the idea is this is what's going to happen. As I alluded to earlier for like interviews, you're going to get a bunch of deliverables. There will be no R spec. You can't run learn against like this take home challenge. Um, what you'll have to do is read through the deliverables build them from scratch based on logic, your own process, and then test them on your own. So I'm going to introduce uh, how Flatiron School runs. It's kind of like uh, an important part. We'll take an actual five-minute break, and then we will come back and address it. So what I wanted to... All right, so uh, where we kind of left off is this, uh, is this idea that I made this sort of like combo file so I can pull in both of the classes. So I have access to both of them. So let's kind of like talk about some real world scenarios and let's build out some of this functionality. So the first thing that I'll come across, and this will all be in a readme, it won't necessarily be written like in the class, but I need this author to be able to write a brand new book. Right? So let's think about how we can do that. Uh, Let's think about what the author and the instance specifically is going to look like. And that is, um, if an author needs to write a brand new book, should this be a class method or an instance method? Let's think, ready? A particular author writes books and not sort of like author in general writing a particular book. So. In terms of like scope and responsibility, are we think in class or are we think in instance? instance? Instance, right? So that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is simply just I'm going to create a method, right? An instance method because that's where the responsibility falls. And what are we going to name that method? Well, let's think about what it should look like. And that is if I have author, uh, I can do author.new, and then I can pass in some a name and an age. And that is going to be, does anyone want to be an author? What a powerful individual. Mike, the great and powerful Chang. Oops, proper nouns. And then the second argument, age. I mean, that dude is, that dude is wise. I'll just exaggerate that a little bit. And then we'll just put old Mike. 
Cool. Now, in terms of like the naming, right? Uh, sorry, did I make that too obnoxious? Okay, so I have Mike here. Mike is an instance of the author class. So if I wanted Mike to write a book, what should that method look like? Mike dot what? Write book. Yeah, like write book, something like that. All right. If that's what it should look like, then naturally this is what I want to name my method. And that is going to be write book. And that's kind of how I determine that. What should it look like? How readable is it? And that's where I'm going to be pulling sort of that naming. So in the write book, uh, I need to be able to have this particular author needs to be able to basically write a new book. Well, how do we have access to this particular author in the author class? Self. Right, self inside the instance method. It refers to the instance. So I have self, right? So that's interesting. Let's just comment that out for a second. Writes a brand new book. So how can I create a brand new book? What is sort of like the syntax for that? I know you're, you know it, so I just want you to shout out. You're like raising your hand, everyone is talking over you, you know? Um, so like a variable is like book equals a capital book dot new. Mm -hmm. And then you can, I don't know what like book means, so like the intention, but it means I don't know that. Um, cool. So let's do this. We have book here. Let's get some more code here. So we have author, the book class, and then sort of like where I'm writing all my code, right? Running it, rather. So we have book equals to book.new, right? Which makes sense. This author needs to be able to create a brand new book instance. And so part of what it needs is a title, author, and pages. So uh, this author is going to write a brand new book. What's the title, though? Hmm. Where would this want to come from? What makes sense to you about where the title comes from in terms of when it is created? Should I hard code it here? Or does it make sense that the second the person writes the book, that's when they tell it what the title is? Like, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to call it, right? Uh, I was going to think of a clever book name, but the book I'm reading has a lot of curse words in it. So, does anyone have a good book? Wow, How the subtle art. Bagel. Okay. How to make a bagel. Cool? So the idea is that like right when I call this method, that's when I'm going to pass in what it is. Mm -hmm. So naturally, this is going to receive at least minimum one argument. And that is going to be the title of the book. Right? This might be a little obnoxious, so let's just kind of shorten that down to it's going to receive a title. Right? And then what else should it sort of receive? Wow. Right? The, it should theoretically receive this author name. And here's the thing. When I write this book and I make this book.new, I know for a fact the first argument is going to be coming from the argument in here. Right? That's clear. Now, who writes this book? Right, we talked about that already. It's this particular author that's writing the book. So the second argument uh, for author should in fact be self. And this is now, you're starting to see the use case for this keyword self, right? And how many pages? Should I hard code it here or do you think I'm gonna kind of receive it when I make it? Right, so I'm gonna say that this book is uh, how to make a bagel. There's so many ways, huh? What, one page. One? Sire, have you made a bagel? Made a bagel? No. It takes at <laughs> least, at least three pages. I mean, minimum, minimum, uh, one or two. Oh my God. Right. And, and the, no, the next argument it receives is the number of pages, right? So here we'll put num pages. And then so naturally title, self, which is the author, and then it's going to do num pages. And what this is going to do is make that brand new book when I actually call it. So that's sort of like the thought process and the logic of how to build it. But now we need to test. Because we're not giving any R spec, we're not giving any like learn. Um, that's actually. Would you sell for sell? Maybe it's not maybe. Well, let's think through that, right? So let's test it. 
if I now, well, skip this version. All right, let me just run that code again. I have mic.writebook, which means that uh, I look at my book class, I have access to all the books given this class method. So I can do book.all, and that's going to give me, hmm, that looks pretty interesting. It looks like in this book object, oh, that didn't help at all. In this book object, the author is actually an author object. It's not an author string. It's, like a, it's not a string. It's an author object, which means that, remember, book.all returns to me what data type. What do these sort of square brackets indicate? So can I do book dot all dot age remember book dot all gives me back an array is dot age an array method no so if I do book dot all it gives me back the array I'm thinking about what the data type I'm working with I need to go into probably like the first one all right so I'm just gonna do zero that gives me back the actual object. You have to always remember the type of data you're working with. Now, this book object has methods on it. Those methods are things like pages, things like title, and things like author, which gives me back the author object. If this was a string and not the author object, I can't tell how old the author is if it was a string because it would only have string methods on it. Now that I've passed it in an author object, I have all the author methods. So this is kind of the power of object-oriented programming where if I keep passing back and forth objects, each one of those objects has access to their own methods. And so by just looking at this code, I'm looking at all the books, I'm looking at the first book, I'm looking at that particular author, and that author object has a method to it. As opposed to if I pass in a string, I couldn't do that because I'd be calling dot age on a string. So is this sort of like string land and object land sort of making a little bit more sense? Let's actually take a look at, at another example. Uh, if I um, make another book, right? I do book dot new and I pass in, what are the arguments again? Title, author, and pages. So title is cool book, right? If I pass in a string for an author like me, and then I pass in a number of pages, like I'm obviously a G, right? I write books with lots of pages. And then what I can do is I can do book.all. Again, remember, it returns to me that array of books. So if we can see the first book has the author object. And the second book that I made only has the string for a name. So if I do book.all and I get the second object and I ask, hey, what are the pages? And then what is the author? Okay. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't do that. Dot author. What is the author? I get the string me and not the author object. I can't ask for its age because there's undefined method age for the string. So it's important that we pass in these objects instead of just the string. So the question is, if we did self.name, what would self.name be as a data type? A string. So we want to get, get out of string land and into object land because we have more access and more methods and it's more dynamic and it's just more powerful. Does that, that like help sort of like solidify some of those? All right, so that's how I can test this method. If I call it, then it should in fact be what I think it is. So what I can do is I can have another book, right? And that's gonna be another book. Oh, sure, Mike Chang is so smart. Smart book, right? And I just pass it, and this is, this is very powerful. If I get out of here, right, and I run the code again, this is me testing the code without like, all that R spec, all that learn. I now see that Mike wrote two books. 
I can do book.all and I should see an array of two books where Mike is the object Mike is actually the author. And if I take a look, one book, two books. Ah, ah, ah. And the author points to the author object and the author points to the author object. All right, we can test this even more for some additional clarity. And that is I can have another author, and that could be Gabby. And that's going to be, oh, Gabby, Gab the Great. And how old do you want to be? You make you 28. Okay, I've just now made you 28. All right, now Gabby can also write a book. And what do you want to write? HP, nine. That's good. Uh, this is a very, very good read. You've been spending hours on this. Maybe days, maybe days. All right, so if I go back out and I test, then if I do book.all, how many books should I see? All right, it's three. And the first two are going to be by Mike, the Great and Powerful, and then the last one is going to be by the author object, specifically the Gabby author. And so this is how I can test my code by simply going through iteratively and is it doing what I think it's doing? And I can't just blindly run it against tests until it passes and then just assume it is correct. I now need to methodically think of my process. What am I trying to do? How do I dig in? How do I test it? And is it what I want it to be? Cool? So that first deliverable is complete, right? And that is, an author should be able to write a book. Each one of these instances, you can see this code scale because it doesn't matter what author it is or how many authors I have, each one has the ability to write a book. Now, the next deliverable is how many books did I write? Now, this is kind of like a tricky one, so let's think through this one carefully. The first thing is how many books did I, me, write? Class? or instance responsibility. Instance responsibility. So I'm gonna make a instance method. Um, what do you want this to kind of look like? If I were to do Gabby dot, and then find out how many books I wrote, so like, what do you want to name this? What do you want it to say here? Find book by author. Find book by author will return what? Right, so like, what would make sense? Gabby dot, like book count, right? Something like that. So uh, it should look something like this, right? Just the way that it reads. Mike dot book count, right? Dana dot book count should return a number about how many books there are. Make sense? So of course, that would mean that we've determined that it's instance method. And I've figured out what I want it to look like, what makes sense. So I'm going to go write that method name. Now I've got this book count. What should this book count be? This one's like kind of the hard part. The idea behind this, the idea behind. Say again? I can't, I can't actually hear you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can kind of like go through all the books and there's a way that we can kind of count them all up. So what we can do is uh, let's do it this way, right? The only way to find out how many books a particular author has, you have to go through how many books? One, some, half, or all. So I know I need to start with all the books. I know that. And I know how to get all the books, so book Dot all. That's going to give me the array. So I'm going to go through all the books, right? And then as I go through all the books, I need to find out if that particular book, the author, is me, right? So like I'm going to pick up the first book. I'm like, oh, did I write it? Sure did. I'm going to pick up the second book. Did I write it? Yep. I'm going to pick up the third book. I'm like, did I write it? Nope. And I'm going to just kind of throw it away. I mean, trash book anyway. I didn't write it. Uh, and I'm going to have to go through that with every single book. 
So I need to go through all the books. Now the power of the innumerables will start to make sense. Sure, I can dot each of them, right? But is there a better way? What would make sense in terms of what iterator, what innumerable I want to use to go through all the books and just pick, maybe just select the ones that are mine? I was just going to like continue. I'm not mocking your intelligence. But that's like the idea, right? Like I'm thinking through how I'm going to do it, right? So in the select, right, inside the pipes, it's going to be a book. Sometimes I see this, right? Sometimes you're like X. You're like, mm. while technically the code will work, is it readable, right? I know what am I going through the array of. Each thing inside the book.all array will be a book. So I'm going to put book inside the pipes there. And now following this exact pseudocode, I'm going to select the books where the book, remember it's the book object. So this is like, like a, a large object with attributes. What am I looking for about this book? All right, I'm checking book.author, which is the author object and not a string. It's the author object. And I want to check to see if it's, if it's me. Did I write that book? Now, what does this return? What does select return? Yes, it's going to return an array of all the objects. What does this sort of indicate it should return? Should this return an array or should it return a, a number? Right. So if I have now the array where I'm the author and there's nine things in it, how can I turn that array into the number of things in there? Yeah, I could just call, I could just call dot count or dot length on it. So to make it sort of readable, I can easily do this. Or I can do uh, something like books, my books, maybe. My books equals to this. And then I simply want to return my books dot count. Wow. Right? And that's like the logic. That's just the thought process behind it. And it's not super difficult. You just got to take the time to think, like, what am I trying to do? So. After I build it, I should probably, that's right, move forward in the lecture because we're running out of time, but I'm definitely going to want to test. Uh, so do, 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 if I actually run this code again. I now have access to this brand new instance method. So if I go to Mike and I say uh, book count, Mike should have how many books? And then Gabby should have how many books? Wow, it's working as intended. It's working the way I think it is. I've now tested it. I've met this deliverable. Now I'm going to move on. And that's sort of the thought process behind it. Cool. So you don't need to just blindly run learn, pass a test and be like, great, got it, see you, bye. All right, you can just actually think through what it's supposed to be. So that's not bad, right? right. And so this one's a little bit dicey, maybe. Uh, I want to know all the books I've written that are more than 50 pages long. So what I'm going to do is I have to figure out if this is a class or an instance method. Which one should it be? Instance, right? So I'm just going to kind of help you along here. Uh, this is how, how many, like, what is this one? This it should return a list of my books. Yeah, that are more than 50 pages long. Yep. So I'm just going to define, uh, we've determined it's an instance method, so I'm going to write an instance method. Uh, huh? Sure, like long books. Oh, boop, boop. oh, just kidding. And inside here, what should I do? Well, if I'm trying to figure out all of my books that are over 50 pages, I should be looking through what? All the books, right? Um, here's the tricky part. I need to look through all the books, right? Should I look through all the books from everyone or only my books? Man, I guess I have to just rip this code again so I can determine all of my books and then go through all of my books and check their pages. So if I'm kind of reusing this code, 
what I can do is I can build a helper. Uh, let's see, like all my books. And that's just going to do sort of this. So I can pull this out and just call in the method all my books. And here, the same. OK, just kidding. Oh, oh wow. You saw that? <sighs> Even better. Um, this is important. Just by like a thumbs up or like a eh or like a down, could you have followed me on that refactor? I probably should have talked more about more through it, but okay. So we were saying all my books here, all the books written by you. By yes. Okay. Right. And so if I'm looking for only my books that are over 50 pages, I have to at least be going through just my books. Why don't I need to what? <clears throat> you don't need to call. I did right here. All my books dot count. Oh, wow. It's it's invoking. With. Yeah, and I'm just running dot count on it because all my books returns an array. Yeah. Is that it's useful to make helper methods for things that you're going to find that you're going to be using a lot, like all my books first, or do you make deliverable? And then when you see that you're going to be using the same over and over, you're like, oh, I can yeah. see. The question is, should I try to over-optimize early, build these helpers, and then sort of like build out my deliverables? I would say definitely do not do that. I would 100% first make it work. Write the code that makes sense to you, make it work, and then as you start to see like, oh man, it's the same code. I'm using this again. Once you feel that pain of writing it over, and then looking at the fact that I need, I need the exact same code, then you're like, this is probably a good place to refactor. Then it would make sense, even to yourself, how to refactor and what to refactor. Um, the truth is there's a good philosophy here uh, at Flatiron School. And it's like, first make it work, then make it sexy. Uh, because if you try to over-optimize and refactor early, you will lose your train of thought. And that is like, I need to make this work. I need to like write all this out. And then uh, the concept of dry, which is D-R-Y, do not repeat yourself, is if you start to use code, the same exact code, more than two or three times, you should refactor it. And so that you can just call on that helper method. That's sort of the, the rule of thumb, yeah? Does that help? Okay. So now that I'm going through all of my books, right, this is an array. What do I need to do inside this array? Right, so which what am I doing? Should I dot each this thing? Right. What does map do? What does collect do? What does select do? What does find do? Those are some tough questions. Right? So let's take the second to like think through that. Is it, is it, Okay, let's take a second to think through that. Um, what map will do is map will do what is known as a one-for-one -one transformation. If I have three things in an array, map will always return in a new array of three things. They're just transformed data. So for example, I have an array of one, two, three, and I run dot map on it. What I'm gonna do with each of these numbers is I want to simply return true, and I'm going to end. How many things in my array will I get? Three. But what will each thing be now? It's a one-for-one one transformation. So if I have three numbers and I say, hey, they're all true now, it's going to return an array of all same number of items in the array, but now it's transformed. If I do something like select, which we just did, all right, and that is I have three books in the array and I just want to check to see, hey, which one are mine? Does that impact the number of items in the array? So if I have three books and I only want to check to see the ones that are mine and I select only the ones that are mine and it returns a new array, is it guaranteed to be three things? No, so select can impact the number of items in the array, but not necessarily what the return 
value of each item. Like it doesn't change it. If I have three objects, they can never come back as sort of two strings. It only come back as one, two, or three objects. Changing the original array. The original array is changed. No, the original array does not change. It returns a new array with that information that you wanted to select out of it. Both functions. Yes, both functions will return a new array. Correct. But it's not mutated. It does not mutate the original one, correct. All right, so we're good on select and map. All right, um, cool. Given that, I'm going to go through all my books, right? And I only want to pick or the ones that have more than 50 pages, all right? So just thinking through what you're trying to do and picking the correct enumerable is like half the battle. So do do do. You ready? And by ready, I mean, did you like that? I said do do. Um, book. It's, it's been a long day. Uh, and so I only want to select the ones if the book dot author pages is equal to 50 or greater than 50. Wow, what good logic. But now I need to test this. Um, here I have a book with three, a book with 10,000, and a book with 8,700 plus pages. If Mike runs the long books method, what should he get back? One book, right? Specifically the smart book. So that's what the logic says. Let's test and actually find out if it runs. So if Mike does long books, it returns an array, because select will return a new array, but with only the smart book. Now, if Gabby runs it, what happens? One book. So, Gabby.longbooks. Hmm. That looks right. Is this enough data for you to concretely say that this is working properly? It's kind of dicey, right? If I was doing this, I would make one more. I would probably very quickly just make three or four more books for Gabby with like one or two more than 50 one or two less than 50, and then see what comes back. Because then I can be 100% sure that it's working the way I intend. Cool? And that's sort of like the thought process. Um, let's do just sort of one more, because we have uh, three deliverables here. It is sort of toward the end of the day. I could tell you're kind of tired. I know we took two breaks today. We talked about the code challenge. Uh, let's sort of talk about this, and then I will sort of release you from this prison of lecture. Um, I'm now in the book class, right? We finish all the deliverables for author. Inside the book class, what I want to do is I want to find a book by a title. Let's think. Should this responsibility fall on the book class to look through sort of all the books for a title, or should this fall on an instance to find like a particular book by a title? What sort of kind of makes sense here in terms of the scope? Class. Wow. This class is very strong, right? So if I know it's a class, easily, the first thing I'm going to do is definitely start that with the class method. Now, what should this look like? Thinking through the code here, I see book dot, hmm. What should the name of the method be here? Find by Something like find by title would make a lot of sense, right? So like find by title. That's kind of what I want to call it, right? So again, just that same sort of process, find by title. <clears throat> now, what does this really do? Um, in the same way that we kind of talked about how I'm going to look through this data, what do I need access to? If I'm trying to find a book by a particular title, do I need all the authors? I need all the books, right? So I can do book.all here. Or because I'm in a class method, I can probably use Ooh, spicy, right? But even spicier is I am the class here, so can I just call the all method on the class? Ooh, dicey. The answer is yes. Um, so just for clarity's sake, I'm going to put self.all here so you can see what method I'm calling. Yeah? So self.all returns an array of all the books, 
And what I want to do is what? I want to find a particular book by a title. What innumerables should I be looking for? Remember what select does. What does select do? Returns a new array with all of the books that meet that condition, right? I've heard of something called find, which is also an enumerable. And what this does is it will go through each book, and the first time it hits that condition that's true, it will return one thing and one thing only, the first time it's true. So if I'm using find, uh, I'm going through all of the books. What do I want to do here? If the book dot author, pages, title mm, is what? Is equal to maybe like some book that I'm looking for, right? Some book I'm looking for. I need, I need a title, right? This method needs to receive the title that I'm actually looking for. I could determine that. So if I know that this thing needs to receive, right, like the title of book, then that must mean even when I'm calling it, I should give it a title, right? You can kind of like figure out what the needs are and build it from there, right? There's no sort of magic formula. It's like, what should this thing do? So if I pass in something like how to make a bagel, should this return something? So it's going to return. I'm just going to. That's basically what's happening, right? I want to do find, where the book title is equal to the title that I pass in. So let's test this code. Now, how do I invoke a class method on book? Right, it's book dot found by title, right? I was, it's weird. So if I do book dot actually, oh, I wrote it right there. Book dot find by title, how to make a bagel that we know exists. So I should in fact get back a book. Wow, there it is. And the only real way to make sure it works is if what if I pass in a book that doesn't exist? That should not return anything, and it doesn't. So I thoroughly tested that this method works. So now I feel like pretty comfortable that this thing works. I can pass it another book that exists and that should work as well. Um, but that's kind of the idea, right? Like determining class versus instance, right? How to name it. Should it get any arguments, right? Like why? And then what iterator should I be using, right? Each, map, find, select. I'm just making iterators rain here. Um, and that's like really about it, right? Then you want to test your code. So I hope that you haven't felt like, oh my god, the code challenge. It's more like it's just a process, meeting these deliverables and testing them. You had a question, and then we will we'll break. Um, no, no. You just want to say how great you feel about yeah. the material. OK, cool. Real question. Um, you yes. Um, I'm going to talk about it right after I kill it. Um, is there any other questions? Yeah, it's an exact match, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, great.